Hello, my name is Christopher Wallbaum. I am a professor of music education at the Academy of Music in Leipzig, Germany. The title of my paper is Modern Times. Does doing effective learning contradict doing music? A philosophic reflection through and on an analytical short film about the neoliberal stream practice in a music lesson. You can see the structure of my lesson. The interest and method of this paper, the backstory of this analytical short film emerged, watching the ASF and then the interpretation. What is this ASF about? First and last cuts, the practice theoretical framing, results, one, doing effective learning in the lesson and beyond, two, doing music in the lesson and beyond, three, the practice and rationality in the lesson. Interesting method. The interest is not in the teacher or whether she is doing a good job. Rather, I assume that she does a good job in the rules of the game. The interest is in the rules of the game. Specifically, the interest is in the practice of effective learning and its relationship to music as practice. The method consists of investigating the practices of a music lesson that makes both effective learning and music its subject. The method consists in two steps, creating an analytical short film of three minute lengths from and about the lesson, and interpreting and explaining the analytical short film. The backstory or how this ASF emerged. In 2018, result of the project comparing international music lessons on video was published in a book with 10 DVDs, also available in open access today. What we found was that comparing music lessons transnationally entailed the reflection of larger contexts, curricular, governmental and global doctrines. Works of Andreas Lehmann Wermser and Olet Sandin both interpreted the same so called Scotland lesson, because recorded in Scotland, as neoliberally structured. But they did not make their analytical short films about this aspect. So at first I had the idea to create an ASF about neoliberal, neoliberal structures in this lesson. So why did we choose the term effective learning? In short, there were three reasons. Firstly, in the lesson it can be clearly found out that practices of learning are addressed separately from the subject matter of music. Secondly, this form of practice corresponds exactly to the general pedagogical idea of learning to learn. The practice of learning learned in this way should then be applicable as a passepartout to the world knowledge that is in constant change. Thirdly, in international encounters with music educators, I have experienced that the concept of effective learning was sometimes understood as non-normative. For these reasons, it seemed promising to address the meaning of effective learning in practice. The focus on effective learning seemed more appropriate for capturing the practice of this lesson. The neoliberalism thesis of Lehmann Wermser and Sandin can be discussed more clearly from there. In 2019, this ASF was produced by a seminar group led by me and assisted by the student Johanna Borchert. We presented the short film at the EAS conference at, at Malmö. I have only changed the title later. Today, in 2021, the short film still lacked a written explanation or complementary information, which turns the short film from an artistically ambiguous aesthetic object into a criticizable analytical short film for a scientific practice. 
I am today presenting this explanation. In this respect, this paper is first an interpretation of the short film and after all its explanation. It defines the meaning of the short film as an overall analytical short film entitled Modern Times Does Doing Effective Learning Contradict Doing Music? Some information on the composition of the short film will be use useful during watching it. Scenes are taken from the Scotland lesson, mostly according to their order in the lesson. In the top left corner, the face of the lesson is written in green. The time order of the lesson is Introduction on Learning Intentions and Success Criteria, 5 minutes. Identifying Instruments, 5 minutes. Identifying Dance Rhythms, 21 minutes. Performing Braveheart, 21. Reside Refuge, 6. Total Length, 58 minutes. Intertitles are taken from the Scottish Curriculum for Excellence, often identical word for word with the teacher's announcements. Reflective insights are what does confidently mean? Playing confidently equals playing in time. This lesson contains 13 times learning intentions and 10 times success as a root word. The last cut quotes a rule on the connection between rationalities in classrooms and societies, which three renowned scholars of music education consider to be true. Patricia Broadfoot in 1999, Martin Fortley in 2010, and Andreas Lehmann Wermser in 2018. And the first cut of the ASF quotes the movie Modern Times of Charlie Chaplin. Now please watch the short film. For our learning intentions, who like recap Scottish instruments? Recap Scottish instruments, absolutely correct. Perform Braveheart confidently. How do we know that we have been successful with our learning intentions? I can identify features of the music. I can distinguish between Scottish dances. I can distinguish between the Scottish dances, meaning that I can perform in a whole class performance of Braveheart. I can perform in a whole class performance of Braveheart. That's Recap Scottish instruments. <coughs> Is it woodwind? No. no. Is that Scottish instrument? Yes. yes. Is it strings? Yes. yes. Is it made of wood? Yes. yes. Is it the heart? Yes. yes. To recognise Scottish dances. <laughs> Successful with that. To perform Braveheart confidently, do you think we managed that? Yes. 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 Y
What is this ASF about? The quotations in the last and first cut of this short film place the lesson in broad contexts that correspondent overall to a philosophical and sociological position of practice theory. Interpreting the film excerpt at the beginning on the basis of its imaginary, imagery solely without connotation of the full movie shows an individual in a gear train of toothed wheels that leaves the individual virtually no freedom of self-determined movement. But at the same time, the gear train is repaired or even built by the individual. From a practice theoretical, as well from a culture theoretical point of view, the gear wheels point to the interrelation between social practice and the individual in general, or more specifically, between classroom practice and individual learners. The theory of Theodor Schotsky neither understands social practice as the, re the result of autonomously competing individuals, nor the individuals as a result of a holistic social practice. Instead, something third, like language for Ludwig Wittgenstein, is identified in between, namely dispersed and integrative practices. In one direction, these practices enable the emergence of large forms of practice, one can also call them cultures, in the other directions, a direction, they enable thinking, feeling, and acting. In this way, practices move ontologically to the center of world events and methodologically to the center of classroom research. The quote in the last ASF shot, Cut 38, does not refer to the individual in relation to a social cultural, cultural practice as in cut one, but to the relationship between two fields of social practice, classroom and society. Assessment procedure are the vehicle whereby the dominant rationality of the corporate societies is translated into the system and process of schooling. Although this quotation has a holistic slant from a practice theoretical perspective, it offers various points of connection. First, this quote implies a correspondence between the practices in societies and their schools. Secondly, this correspondence justifies the reconstruction of implicit meanings of the observable practices. Result 1. The basics of doing effective learning or its rationality are, in short, breaking down each learning in item into tiny little sections, that's the words of the teacher in an interview, and to the trinity of clear task, success criteria, and measurable control. These structural features are both made explicit through oral and written sayings and demonstrated through doings. In general terms, we speak of effectiveness when the greatest possible intended effect is achieved with the least possible effort. In school, this means that the success must be, be accessible, fully achieved, half, close, etc., and consequently measurable. In addition, in terms of effectiveness, practices that cannot be measured or evaluated seem superfluous or even disruptive because they make practice unclear and consequently not evaluable. 
In order to avoid the problem of ambiguity, the learning object is broken down into those tiny little sections that can be exactly identified. This is what the analytical short film shows. The three step is repeated more than 10 times. The instruments and the rhythms of the Scottish dances can be identified by means of precise questions. And the criterion for the success of the performance is reduced to a measurable playing in time. Floating above it all, technical terms on the ceiling. If we go beyond these observable practices and draw on discourse practices for effective learning, then this means that the rationality of the three-step doing is to be transferred to all areas of life. I end this first result with a quotation of Watkins and others from 2002. <clears throat> learning is no longer the province of special institutions, it is a way of being. Effective learners have gained understanding of the individual and social processes necessary to become effective learners. This is not just acquisition of particular strategies, but the monitoring and reviewing of learning to see whether strategies are effective. This has been described as learning how to learn, or in German, lernen des Lern, lernen lernen. It's a very uh, popular term and idea. <clears throat> Internationally, I think. Result two. The observable doings in relation to music lack crucial aspects of music practice. I would briefly characterize music as social practice by linking actions to meaningful perceptual processes, dealing with feelings and ambiguity, celebrating, letting go of control. I do not claim to be able to provide an even remotely complete definition of music here. But if I understand music not only as an acoustic phenomenon, phenomenon, but as a practice in which auditory phenomena are linked to meaningful perceptions, as a practice that is often about feelings and that, is always, that always includes feelings, ambiguity, celebrating the process and the release of control, then this is probably a sketch that contains at least individual applicable aspects for everyone. Comparing some of these doings with the doings found in the lesson, a fundamental difference in the rationality of the doings becomes clear. Identifying clear aspects is fundamentally different from celebrating processes, feelings, and doing meaningful perceptions and releasing control is the opposite of measurable performance control. Results free. The ASF shows that the rationality of effective learning contradicts the aesthetic rationality of music. In other words, if one strives to teach music through effective learning practices, the subject music is transformed or lost. Thus, the answer to the question in the title of this paper is simply yes. Doing effective learning contradicts doing music. This is where my lecture ends. For me, it is a beginning for very fundamental questions that relate to the result on the one hand and to the method presented on the other. In my opinion, both touch on, to use Bourdieu's words, orthodoxy and doxa in social practice. Thanks for the attention. <clears throat>